Dr. Sharpton's people, we're continuing our study of God's story, and today we're going to be talking about receiving the law. So, that's what we're going to talk about today. So, to kind of get us started, why are we given rules to follow? Like, why are you, whatever, your parents, teachers, whoever, why are you given rules? To protect us from danger. Yeah. Protect us from danger, yeah. Bad people. Bad people. Alright, anything else? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Let's get you focused in, Superman. Alright, why aren't we given rules to follow? What page are we on? Uh, it's going to be starting on page 20. 17. Wait, or 17. 22. 22. Yeah. 22, that's what I thought. Page 22. Yeah, 22. Well, uh, to prevent you from wrong. doing something bad. To prevent you from doing something bad, to protect us. All right, those are all some reasons why we have rules to follow. So, what are some uh, rules that adults have to follow? Well, actually, also on page 21, too, is where the scriptures will be, too, if y'all want to <laughs> Speeding rules. Speeding rules, yes. Mm. Definitely. Texting definitely. My mom. While driving? Yeah. Texting while driving? That's really probably not a good thing. It's not very That's safe. That's not really a law. It's not, yeah, it's not against the law. It's just. No, drinking while it's driving. It's better, right. Some people actually say that texting while driving is as dangerous as drinking while driving. Yeah. So it's better not to, but it's not against the law right now. Yeah, but that's another reason why we have different rules to make things easier, uh, to keep us safe. Imagine if there were no traffic violations, like there were no rules on the roads. There would oh just God. be oh mass chaos everywhere. Do what? My mom would go crazy. She doesn't crazy. obey the rules. She would go like 120. Yeah, so that would be just mass chaos. So that's why we have different rules and stuff. And for the Israelites in particular, remember after they leave out of Egypt, they wander in the desert for like 40 years. So imagine that many people just wandering around the desert if they didn't have any rules or anything that governed them. It would be complete mass chaos and anarchy. So that's one of the reasons. There's many reasons, obviously, why God gives the law, but for practical reasons, also to govern this nomadic people who are going to be wandering around the desert for a while. Okay. So if you'll put up that quote, Brian. Wrong does not cease to be wrong because the majority share it. What? What do you think that means? Do you agree with that? Disagree okay. with that? It's not, it's still oh. wrong even though everyone else is doing it. If there's a lot of people doing it, it's still wrong now. Like, just because, okay, since everybody's doing it, it doesn't, like... It doesn't make it right. Well, why? Right. Because it's wrong. But why? Why is it wrong? Because people <laughs> say... one guy does Because it, rules! ...that thinks the other is allowed to do it. Like, Graham, you're making this more complicated no. than it is. <laughs> <laughs> does something bad, it makes other people think that it's good. No. No? Oh my goodness, I'm going to brain explode. <laughs> so why? Why is it wrong, though? Who decides? Because God decides. Leo told C. He decided? He's yes. the authority on right and wrong? Yeah. All truth comes he from said. him. <laughs> Are you saying God? That? What if you don't believe in God? Well, He's a Russian, he's a Russian writer. Oh. <laughs> but if you don't believe in God, what's right and what's wrong? How do you decide? It's wrong. It's you tell morals. me it's right, but morals. why is it right? Why is it wrong? Like, the morals because you give yourself. If you tell yourself that something's wrong, you're going to believe in yourself that it's wrong. So just because you, so you decide what's right for you. No. Well, actions for like, if this. you're like me, okay, I'm a rule follower. I don't okay. like to break oh. rules. Right. I have morals, and I'm just, not, no. But if you're like Graham over there, and <laughs> you tell him not to do something, he's, seems okay to me, so I guess I'll still do it. So, but you get to decide what what's right and wrong, though, for you. No, the government. The government decides. The government, yes, yeah, the government. Even if they're wrong, they don't do it. I guess like, because I feel like you'll be punished. If okay, you just do it fundamental wrong. rights and wrongs, though. Mm -hmm. It comes from who? Yourself. I don't from know. yourself, though. I don't know. Eileen was on the right track when she said God, obviously, because that's where ultimate right and wrong comes from. The problem is a lot of people don't believe in God, and so for them. You know, why should we do this? I get to decide. It basically comes down to, or actually I'll go and ask the next question. Is it possible to know right and wrong, though? Yes. How? Yeah. If. <laughs> well, just based on the picture. Yeah. Jesus and Satan. Well, it doesn't look like nobody wrestling. won so far. It's like they funny. just started. Graham, yeah. what kind of question? Yeah, well, Jesus course, is going to Jesus win. Jesus is going to win. I know, but win. I'm just saying, like, in the picture You just need so to far. stop talking. It just started. <laughs> It just started. No, it's okay. You're giving yourself a hole. This is like the beginning of the Bible. At the end, Jesus is going to win. Yeah. It'll be okay. All right. So how do we know? Is it possible? The beginning of the Bible. Huh? Do what? Yes, Mary and Jesus will have the beginning of the Bible. Jesus is eternal. <laughs> He's been in existence forever. Is he really forever. bringing that up? Yes. 
lives outside of Did, time. Was this a, a past thing or something? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh. a past thing. And what? Like, Don't bring it back up. It's a running joke. Okay. <laughs> well, anyways, all right. So is it possible to know right from wrong, though? Yes. Yes. How? Because your actions, like, if you do something bad, then, like, like you knock over that, and you think it's right, the light doesn't work. Mm -hmm. so it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> So you're saying, what you're saying is consequences, if there's negative yes. consequences to that? Like if you're a dog in the pee in your house, <laughs> and then like your owner like shoves your face in the pee and tells you no. Okay, I, I get what you're saying, so it's negative consequences, okay. Yeah. Alright, does it even yeah. matter though, what people do? If what yes. you decided though, if what you decide is right, then mm -hmm. is it okay to do it? If you think it's okay. Depends if like, depends, on money. Kind of. depends if you're crazy or not. Like yeah. if you have, like, if you're well, seriously you crazy. Up, Society. <laughs> <laughs> so society gets to decide morals. Yeah. 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 In Germany, they said it was okay to kill the Jews. Well, you know what? The Germany well, that's wrong. because that's because they were like, they were feared into it. Like they had somebody over them saying, like, you know, if you don't do what okay. I say, I'm going to kill you. So. I only did that because of. Uh, Graham just. No, I just had. No, I enjoy Graham's comments. <laughs> <laughs> it reflects what? badly on oh, me. No. What, were you, what were you saying, Graham? Seriously. Oh, I'm saying um. Oh. They only killed the Jews because they thought the Jews were better than them. No! <laughs> no, that's what they did. Graham, I did. I did it. What was it? I did an NHS project on this. Don't even... There's some... Anyways, let's not get on the subject of the Holocaust. That's off topic. The point is, though, is that's what happens when you have more relativism, though, when you get to decide. That basically means you get to decide what's right for you, and what's you right for like you is you right for you, but what's right for you may not be the same as me. We all get to decide for ourselves. Morals is just completely independent to each person. Obviously, that's going to create problems because then that means you can do whatever you want, and it's well, that's what's right for me. It's what's good for me. There's no such thing as truth. I get to decide what's true and what's not. So for me, eating a chocolate chip cookie could be immoral. For one of y'all, it could be eating a sugar cookie, and it's right for whoever. You know what I'm saying? It just depends yeah. on what you want. So that's obviously a very dangerous thing. And ultimately, we get all authority on right and wrong from God. That's who decides it. Even if you don't believe it. He is going to be the, the source of what is truly what, right and what is truly wrong. And the thing you see with people is that any group of people from the beginning of time had very similar ideas of what is right and what is wrong. That's the thing. Even before the Ten Commandments, when Cain killed Abel, wasn't that wrong? Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. The Ten Commandments hadn't came out yet. So why is it wrong? Because it's how we view it now. Well, because killing God, a person well, is... <laughs> right, but how, why, is, why is killing a person bad, though? Because it's not always your right to take someone's life. Okay, but the point is God had already uh, placed that in people's so hearts, already naturally, that there are certain yeah. things that are wrong and there are certain yeah. things that are right. And God had already placed so that in our heart. If you look at all societies from the beginning of time, murder, stealing, things like that were always, no matter where they are, what time, those were always considered to be bad. Mm -hmm. Bravery was always considered to be good, whereas being a coward was always considered to be bad. Oh. So humans have always naturally had a certain right idea of what is right and wrong. And that comes from God, even if you don't recognize that it came from God. Okay? Do you have a comment, Krista? Does, yeah. that, make, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Because that, to me, that's even one of the things <laughs> that is, are you alright? I don't even know if she's... <laughs> I don't know. Alright. Okay, okay. let's focus. To me, that's even one of the things you see is the proof that there has to be a God, because you have this moral law that's outside of humanity. It's not decided based on what we decide. There's something outside of us that decides right and wrong. So to me, that's one of the things we see. All right. So to kind of backtrack a little bit, you all have been talking about God's story in here the last you know month or so before I got here in the last week when I was here. So what's happened in God's story so far? What's happened? What happened in the beginning from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to when we're in Exodus chapter 20 today? What's happened? Things. Things. That's true. The growth. Of humanity. Of growth of, yes, Everything. <laughs> Do what? Like, just everything in general. Everything in general has happened. Basically. All right, so let's start with God <laughs> creates. Involved. So initially, God's creating man. Why does he create man? So that there can be an earth. So that there can be an earth? Well, like, so can, there's no point in having earth if there's nothing in it. Well, he creates the earth first, isn't he? Well, there's already an animal. So why does he specifically create people, though? What, are they, they well, what else is he going to create? To what? Over the world. Over the world. To what? To make more people. To make more people. Okay. <laughs> why, why does he want any people? 
to roll over the two to have because he wanted someone to love the uh, to love him from his from their own world. Oh, yeah. Right. He wanted somebody yeah. to have a he wanted somebody to have a relationship. He wanted somebody that was gonna love him and that he could pour out his love on also. So that's why he creates man. What happens after he creates Adam and Eve though? They have babies. <laughs> they okay, sin. Well, like, they <laughs> sin, exactly. They oh, sin. Oh my gosh. I'm just like I'm <laughs> Okay. They sin. That's correct. What happens when they sin? They get kicked out of the garden. They get, right, there's this, there's this, right, there's division because God's holy. God can't be, hold on, God can't be with sin. He can't be in close proximity to sin, basically. So when they sin, that creates a division between God and man, okay? Does that make sense? So now, from then on, the rest of God's story is his story of redemption, his plan of bringing man back into right relation with God. Okay, that's kind of what this whole story is, is how God goes from Genesis chapter 2 where man falls and there's division how we get with Jesus eventually, where we can get back in a right relationship with God. That's the whole goal, okay? That's what this whole story is about, is getting back to that right relationship with God. And what he's going to choose is, he's going to choose Abraham and his descendants to make himself known to all of mankind. To show his honor and glory to everyone else, he's going to use Abraham. So that's what y'all talked about a few weeks ago when you talked about God choosing a people. He chooses Abraham to make himself known to everybody else, okay? And then eventually, by the time his descendants become numerous enough, be made into a nation, where are they? Well, they're in slavery. They're in slavery, exactly. So that's what we talked about last week, is God delivering his people out of slavery. And that brings us to this week, where we're going to talk about God giving a law. Because if these people are going to represent God to everybody else, they need to know how they're supposed to live. They don't need to know how they're supposed to represent God. So that's why we get the law, among other reasons. Okay? Alright, so that kind of explains it. So what are the Ten Commandments? I know, y'all just have a couple minutes, I'm sorry. Yeah, hey. I need to go. Oh, you're staying, Marin, though? I'm staying. Okay, okay. And yeah, it's like Stan right at 7. Picking all, up. all right, well, thank you for being here for 30 minutes, and you'll have a wonderful rest of the week. We'll, all right. We'll uh, see you Friday. Yes, yeah. Great. Y'all want to come Friday night to the Underwoods. 6 30, okay? Underwoods. That's our last night. That is the last night. Yeah, we'll Do what, Kristen? Oh, God. What? No, what'd you say? Exists outside. No, what'd you no. say? <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> God exists outside of time. Out of the universe. Brian story. told us. That's true. Think of it Think of it in this way. Think of it this way. Think of it as like a timeline. And if you're looking down at a timeline, you're not in a timeline. So you're seeing everything on the timeline happening once. <laughs> no. Does that make sense? No. no. no I just yes. There has to be time. a beginning. No, I, just, I said God sees multiple futures. And he knows which one we're going to pick. Right, I've always thought of it, like, I think I got this from a C.S. Lewis book, that, like, he's looking down on a timeline, so he knows, like... This is the joke we were talking about. This is it? Okay. She so, like, he sees, no, the, the like, joke, at, the, at yeah. the same moment that he's seeing, like, Jesus crucified, he sees what's happening here now. Like, it's, in him, it's all happening in front of him at the same time, no, because he's not the, inside time. No, the joke was... <laughs> the, was it the universe? It was with Charlie, when Charlie was here, and he was telling me how God has no beginning... Oh, and I was yeah. just like, <laughs> well, have you ever stopped? No beginning. Have you ever stopped to try to think about that? It's true, though. Yes, yes. He, it's mind blowing, isn't it? <laughs> it hurts. It does. I picture a voice just coming out of nowhere saying, "I want to paint myself." And what? then a magical. I don't. I think like, of no, like, I mean, like someone who's been I want to paint right. myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a magical paintbrush painting a baby. What? Oh, I don't even understand what that means, but okay. But yes, but yeah, so God is But he has forever. no beginning. Like, if you think about it, okay, he has no beginning, but he has to begin somewhere. But, no. But he has to begin before that. But he has to begin before <laughs> exactly. that. Exactly. And everything has a beginning, though. But not God. No, it doesn't. He is the beginning. But where did he come from? He's the Alpha from? and Omega, the beginning okay. and the end. Where did he come from? Narnia. Narnia, no. <laughs> but see, that's the thing, though, is that's, it's hard for our, finite means like it's limited. Infinite means, obviously, that it's unlimited. God is unlimited. We're very limited. So it's impossible for us to wrap our brain around the infinite. God. But he is. <laughs> it's great. But think about how great that that's the God we serve, that he is infinite. There is no beginning to but it. But see, in my mind, I think of infinite being you start here, and then it's just forever and ever and ever. I don't think See, you, have a, you don't have an idea of infinite, then, because infinite <laughs> is it ever. Always stops. There is no beginning. There is no end. Okay. There is no limit. I'm never going to grasp it. Just keep going. And you know what? I can't grasp it either. It's impossible like, to grasp. That's the thing. They're just over here. You don't understand. You don't understand. <laughs> but, that's a, but again, that's the great thing of God, though. It's impossible for us to wrap our brain around how awesome and majestic he is. 
So sometimes you just have to simply sit back and go, okay, he is that great. I don't really understand how, I've but he is. I've given up so many times. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, anyway, we need to kind of get back to the lesson. All right, so what are the Ten Commandments? Can no other label? gods but okay. God. No other gods. No other idols. Okay, well, that's one and two. There's no yeah. other gods before me murder. and then no, in, no image made. Okay, no. what? Do not commit murder. No murder, that's three. Obey your mother and father. That's four. I'm actually very impressed with this because typically teenagers, when they list it, that's the one they don't talk about. Like they just like that's the only one. I that's the only one I really know. Really, well, that's good. Yeah. Cause like I've seriously really asked teenagers like numerous times this and seen other people in the like list eight or nine of them, and one of the ones they always forget is honor your father, father and mother. They just like completely forget <laughs> that. One. That's just like they don't think about it. All right, so that's four. What are the others? Um, don't commit adultery. Okay. Do not envy, right? Don't covet. Yeah. Envy. Covet. Okay. Um. That's six. Six. You got this. Don't use God's name in vain. There you go. Yeah. That's seven. Obviously not in order, but that's seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you asked me to put them in order. Okay. Well, we're going to do them in order in just a minute. Um, wait, wait. Okay. Give us a hint. Okay. Uh, it's uh, when you're talking and you're not being completely... Don't lie. lie. There you go. <laughs> wait, we can't lie? They also not bear false witness. With oh, the okay. It's the same thing it's as lying. The same thing <laughs> so when you lie, you're breaking one of the tape. Well, I know. It's just like, did you have that piece of gum? Like, no. When you, when you had it, that's lying, but. It is lying. But I bet you, like, it's talking about, like, don't. Okay. No, okay. It's, li it's like, li like, anytime you mislead to be deceitful, that's yeah. what they're talking about. Well, I'm deceitful. All right. <laughs> All right, so that's eight. Okay. What are the other two? Have y'all been keeping up with the name so I can remember? Not really. No, I haven't either. No. Okay. I think y'all have not named, um, oh, the Sabbath. Honor the Sabbath. Okay, yes. Oh, oh, I would have never guessed that. that. Yeah, honor the Sabbath. I didn't even know that was a ten commandments. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Good. I'm glad we're studying this. And, and ten, which one of y'all not named still? Did they say murder? They yeah, said murder. I said murder. Eileen would have said adultery. Yeah. It's important. Honor your father and mother, you said. Love thy good. neighbor. Is that the well, love your neighbor as yourself. Maybe you did say them all already, because you said... I didn't think we said steal. Oh, you didn't say steal? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. All right, well, steal. <laughs> well, we've said them all now. I don't know which don't one know. we... I forgot y'all said, but we've said them all now. So anyways, but that's a tip. But I, I was actually interested to see if y'all would say honor your father and mother, because like I said, that's just... Y'all that's just all like, people. That's one of the three I yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah that's good. Out of all people, I'm the one that's... Well, that's good, though. All right, so anyways, let's look yeah. uh, on uh, page... Uh, you can look at it, he'll put it up on the screen too, or you can look on page 22, 1, as far as the scripture as we read it. And we're going to do Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 and 2 first. All right, does anybody want to read it off there? Well, you do. And God spoke all these words. Make sure listen to reading, okay. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Okay. And if you want to look now on page 22, a little part where it says Lord, it says, God began by identifying himself as the Lord Yahweh, the God who brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the place of slavery. The people had arrived at Mount Sinai just three months after the deliverance from slavery in Egypt. The fact that God identifies himself first as Lord and then mentions the deliverance of the Israelites from slavery is the basis of the covenant he established with the people. He had the right to set the terms of the relationship and set the standards for right and wrong precisely because the Israelites, Israelites owed their very existence his creativity and his deliverance. So, like, in order for somebody to make a rule, you have to be in a position of authority, right? Teachers yeah. make rules for students, parents for kids. And so God, even though he's God, he shouldn't have to tell them why he can give them rules. He's Before he gives them the rule, he's like, listen, here's the rules you're going to be getting. But before that, remember, I am God. Not only am I God, and I have that authority, I'm also the God that brought you out of Egypt. I cared about you and took care of you. So these aren't just rules for my own benefit. These are rules that are actually going to benefit you, okay? These are rules that are going to make your life better if you actually follow it. So he's kind of starting them off before he goes into that, okay? So how does God identify himself in verse 2 then? And y'all can write as we go too. 